finally a tier list. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Dude, you guys are literally spamming me for tier lists. Like, literally in the suggestion form, there's like 500 requests for a biology tier list, 500 requests for a science world tier list, 500 requests for like more resources on science Olympiad tier list. It's crazy. You guys are literally addicted. Come on. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. Well, okay. <laughs> I guess I'm addicted too, so it works out. That's good. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Prara, and today we are finally going to be doing the Science Bowl and Quiz Bowl resources tier list, and this is one that I've wanted to make for a very long time, because Science Bowl and Quiz Bowl are honestly my, one of my favorite extracurriculars. They are so heckin' fun. I might even do it in high, in college, I don't know yet, because, like, it is kind of a time commitment, you gotta, like, memorize and do Anki and, like, uh, study every single day to be somewhat decent, but still, it, it was really fun, and I hope that you guys get to learn some new resources, re re I can speak, <laughs> resources from this tier list. Like, when I was getting into Science Bowl and Quiz Bowl, I had no idea how to study. I was just, like, studying for Olympiads and hoping it would help me out in Science Bowl and Quiz Bowl. But there are a lot of really good resources dedicated to Science Bowl and Quiz Bowl. So hopefully this answers your guys' questions about what resources to use. So let's just get into it. One more thing. <laughs> Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any suggestions. Because I'm making these videos for you guys. So if you guys have anything you guys want to see, just let me know in the comments. Leave it in the suggestion form. Whatever you guys want, okay? Alright, so starting it off, we got Protobol. And Protobol is definitely epicness. So... Basically what Protobol is, is it's a website that lets you buzz live and you don't need anybody to read questions to you. It's just like a computer like showing you the questions and you get a buzz and you get to choose whatever difficulty or questions you guys want. And honestly, I literally did this all of sophomore year when I first got into Quiz Bowl. Like Protobol was literally the funnest thing I had to do in my free time. <laughs> it's kind of cringe. That's probably the most nerdy thing you can do in your free time, but it's very fun, okay? See, let us just show you how epic it is. So... Like, you can always join the public room, there's probably like 500 million people in high school quizable, but I suck at high school quizable because I only get the science stuff. So why don't we make our own room and be a loner? Let's go. Now, I've probably played this on like street on, on video like 500 times, but I just want to show you guys how epic it is. Basically, you can like adjust the reading speed, you can choose what difficulty you want, so that's good. You can choose what like topic you want. I basically do science, philosophy, and mythology, so technically what I would do is I would do custom and then fill out whichever category they wanted to study, but today we'll just do science because I'm a science guy, you guys are science guys, and because I'm too lazy to do the custom thing, that's the main reason. So what about this? Okay, so you could see it reading it, blah blah, blah. um, <laughs> is it, is it not like, okay, is it special relativity or general relativity? It's probably general relativity. No, it's special relativity, what? <laughs> oh god, no, what? Oh my, I'm trolling. Oh, it says gravity, that's what it's asking for. Oh, it's not asking for the theory, it's asking for- Oh, <laughs> oh pretend that didn't happen, okay? Off to a great start, let's go! Usually it's fun, okay? When you get everything wrong, it's not fun, but... Okay, now we're actually gonna pay attention. This time we're only get, we're gonna get it- we're gonna get fast, okay? Pretend I am actually good at this. It's probably Crab Nebula? I don't know, I don't, I don't know Nebulas. Uh, Astro's too fancy. Okay, yes, it is Crab Nebula. Very epic. First step in the creation, am I pull- okay, that's not- oh, stars, okay. Her big horror objects are baby stars, so it's very epic. Let and bismuth are separated. Okay, bets. What is this? Oh, okay. Electrolysis. That's very nice. I didn't know the first one, but Faraday's law is very common. Okay. Scott Tremaine names an entity. La la. Okay. Classic. Cubanos. Is it Kuiper Belt or or Cloud? Ah, oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> oh God, I'm scared. Kuiper Belt. Let's go. We didn't screw up. Or Cloud and Kuiper Belt. Very epic. I don't even know if it's pronounced Kuiper Belt, but anyway, you gotta get the idea. Protobol is so heckin' fun. That's why I just play it on, on video whenever I get the chance, and it's also addicting, so if you get into Protobol, you might stick with Quizbowl for longer, and you might learn some stuff on the way. It's very epic. Okay, next one is Anki. Now, Anki is basically this flashcard app. I've already made a video showing how I use it, but, like, <laughs> I basically have two decks. I just have, like, Quizbowl and Science Bowl, and it basically, what it does, what's cool about it is it's a flashcard app, right? But what's different about it is that it shows you the cards based on how difficult they are for you. So, for example, like, I can click here, like, I could go here. And essentially, this would be my flashcard. I honestly don't remember any of this stuff. I haven't done Anki for a really long time since HSNCT, so I have no idea. My, my flashcards are kind of trash, some of them. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, you can see at the bottom, like, there's... You could say again, and then it'll show it to you sooner. You could say hard, in which case it'll show it to you somewhat sooner than good and easy, right? So it, 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 it's, like, adaptive. And the reason why this is good is because there's so much stuff to learn in Quiz Bowl that, like, you can't go through all your cards all the time, right? So basically what this does is it lets you prioritize the ones that you don't remember that well, and, like, 
ignore the one that you know pretty well and just let them like go off to the future and never come back. What other people do is they like split it up more and they decrease their limits so that like they could just study whatever they feel like each day. But what I wanted to do is I just wanted to have like two really big ones and then just like do all of the cards that were assigned to me each day. Now doing 200 is going to be sucky so <laughs> if I ever get back into it that's going to be kind of sad. But anyways it's pretty good. Like a lot of people are against Anki for some reason. They're like oh carding is like not ethical or something, I don't know, you're not learning things properly, but if you want to learn a lot of things in a short amount of time, you gotta use Anki, like literally medical students use Anki to learn like all the kinds of stuff they had to know. Maybe they're gonna forget it in a little bit, but Anki is really good if you want to remember it for a long period of time. Like learning something properly and using Anki are not two very distinct things, so I personally, if you want to get good at Quizzable, I would for sure use Anki. It's like, it's just like something that makes you better, right? Like even though it's purely for memorization, it's still really useful. Alright, so now we got Wikipedia. You guys are probably like, what? Wikipedia? Come on, everybody just uses it to like search for random stuff. And that's the great part about it. Like it's not a Quizzable specific thing, but the reason why it's so good is because if you don't know something, you can just look it up on Wikipedia and read the Wikipedia page and you get so much hacking knowledge, it's crazy. Like I think after sophomore year, once I finished like most of the textbooks I was reading, I just went through like quiz bowl packets and searched up the stuff I don't know on Wikipedia and that's where I learned most of my stuff. Cause the cool thing about Wikipedia is it's not like, it doesn't go through the basics first. Like it literally shows you everything you need to know about something, right? So whenever I get like a question wrong about the liver, right? I read up about the liver and I literally learn so much. Like I know what a falciform ligament is, I, I don't know. Like the only reason I know that stuff is because I went through the Wikipedia page and they, they went through all the stuff about the liver. And honestly, it works really well with other stuff, right? Like if you're doing protobol, you could always just, if you get a question a bit late, you could always look up the, the clues that you didn't know ahead of time. And it also works really well with other stuff, right? Like with Protobol, for example, if you get something wrong, you could always look it up on Wikipedia and you could learn a lot from that. Now, the way I would recommend doing Wikipedia pages is not to like go through it and click on all the links. That, that's like a Wikipedia rabbit hole, but it doesn't really work that well because eventually you're just gonna have like 500 tabs and you don't actually read any of them. The way I would do it is I would personally just like go through it like top to bottom. Like maybe, maybe at least do the top like half at least. And then if you like see some links that seem interesting and you don't know much about that seem applicable to Quizball, then click on it. Don't don't just click on them randomly just because you might not know exactly what something means. Wikipedia is definitely epicness. <laughs> Most of the epicness ones are like on the first on the list, so that is good. Alright, so the next one we got is Chestnut, and Chestnut is basically a like bot, a Discord bot that the guy who made it basically posted it, or like he posted his code online, so you could basically like run the Discord bot yourself. And I'll just show you a demonstration. It's really good. So essentially the way it works is you add it to your Discord server, right? Then you could do like, and then we do PA size seven, right? That basically says, I wanna do science at difficulty seven, right? And then you could just do PK and you got questions. So let's see if we could do any of these. The reason why I do a seven is cause it's kind of hard for me. So <laughs> bro, value the spin for a spin one half particle. Is it not two or something? Bro, <laughs> okay. And the good thing is that if you, if it doesn't like recognize your answer, you could always click the check mark. Okay. The strong key anomaly is observed in salt with this property as it is due to unpaired electrons or partially filled orbitals. Orbital quenching in molecules normally ob ob obvious. What? Is it paramagnetism or, or the like, yeah, I feel like it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. And then this odd property seen in laser. What is this? Higher and Okay. I thought it was population inversion. What? What is the, I, I was going to say population inversion, but then they give it in the question. God dang it. Oh, I don't know. Negative temperature on an... Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> That's what happens. Okay. And then and then if you're done, you can say end and it'll show you how many questions you get for bonus, right? So that's very epic. Honestly, I wouldn't say it's like epicness here. I just do it for fun sometimes instead of protable. Like when I have limited amounts of time and I don't want to go through like massive toss-ups, I just go to Chestnut and I just like <laughs> grind out a bunch of questions and it's pretty fun. So... I'm gonna say Chestnut is pretty good. It's kind of hard to set up though if you don't know how to use it because like the public Chestnut bot that you could invite to your server is kind of is like not very reliable but setting it up on your own and running it on your own computer is also pretty hard so um it's, it's kind of hard to use. If you guys need help setting up your Chestnut bot just let me know and I can help you guys out just like <laughs> send me a link to your discord server or something and DM me in discord and I can help out. All right, so next one is Quizbowl Packets. And I personally think that Quizbowl Packets once you finish like reading through textbooks and you have basic knowledge in your field Quizable packets are amazing because essentially you could go through each question and based on which one, which clues you don't know in that question, right? Like quizable clues get from hardest to easiest, right? It's pyramidal. Essentially, you, you could like look where you would get it in the actual thing and then just like look up the clues that you didn't know beforehand. Like really, this is the only way I was studying throughout senior year, right? Like my main way of studying was just going through quizable packets and seeing what I didn't know. And what's really good about quizable packets is because there's so many of them. Like science bowls kind of like has like this really limited amount of sample problems, but quizable packets have like so many. And, and you can literally choose whatever um, difficulty you want, right? So it's basically called quizablepackets.com. 
You can see there's so many questions. Um, you can see the difficulty right next to it. So there's a lot of options too. And one benefit of using packets over Protobull, right, is that the difficulty is actually kind of consistent, right? Protobull just throws the most random stuff at you, but here you can actually get like some kind of consistency. We could go to HFT. We could download like pack of three. I don't know. <laughs> and essentially you can see the questions like, uh, I honestly don't know anything about like polynomials. So I would probably like search up what the heck is Hilbert's basis theorem. Holy moly. <laughs> And then use Wikipedia to find out even more. It's very epic. Okay, you know what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, technically, if I was studying, I would have to go on quite a bit of a rabbit hole to understand this even. So, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But anyway, that is why quizable packets are very good. And another good thing about it is that it has a ton of knowledge in each question, right? Like, Sciencefull questions kind of have, like, one thing that they ask you about. But quizable questions have, like, so many things about each topic. So, you learn a lot. Basically, my recommendation is if you want to improve your knowledge, maybe not your, like, speed or problem solving or anything, then I would for sure use quizable packets to study. I'm going to put them at pretty good. Actually, no. They're definitely, uh, they're definitely really good. So, I'll put that at epicness. Okay. All right. So, now we got QuizDB. And basically, QuizDB is just a database of questions, like, of quizable questions. And basically, what my friends and I use it to do is basically we would, like, get bonuses, like pull up bonuses, and then just read the bonuses to each other. It's called, it's called penalty kick, PK. Um, it's kind of like what the chestnut bot did, except you do it with other people. Like you could do science, you could do like, um, you could search for that, you could search for whatever difficulty you want, let's do hard high school, and you could do, okay, yeah, there's, there's even like subcategories, but I never use the subcategories, and then you could choose what question you want, let's do bonuses, and we could do randoms, 50 questions, and then you could just read these to your friends, and it's very fun. I honestly did not know anything about QuizDB until one of my friends, <laughs> who's also in Quizbowl, who was also in my AP Physics class, decided to like ask me to do this during class. <laughs> we were literally just messaging on our computers in the back of the classroom while the teacher was lecturing. I'm sorry, okay, but <laughs> it had to be done. This is way more fun than listening to lectures, okay? So I'm going to say QuizDB is pretty good. Like, honestly, I don't use it that much. I only use it for like when I want to just have like fun with my friends and just like read questions to each other, but I don't really use it that much. Okay, ACMSDB. Now this one's not really useful for like, it's like F because it's not really useful for studying for stuff, but like it's pretty good if you want to write questions, right? So essentially what I would do if I want to write a question, and writing questions by the way is a really good way to practice, but what I would do is I would search up the answer line I'm trying to write a question about, and then see other people's questions that other people wrote about it. Like, even though this one's not that useful, I think it's a pretty good thing to know about because, like, you just want to have all the resources you can, right? Just know what, what's out there. For example, if I wanted to see how other people write questions about the liver, because for some reason I'm addicted to livers, we could just do search and hooray, you got, like, a bunch of stuff. We could see, oh, how did this guy write a toss-up on the liver? Let's find it. Liver. And then you can see there's a bunch of clues on it, and you can, like, search each one up if you don't know how it works. Okay. Next, we got Quizlet, and <laughs> I'm just going to put it in bro Y immediately, because I already told you guys, right? Like, the reason why Anki's so good is because it actually lets you prioritize the ones that you don't know that well. But Quizlet, on the other hand, you have to study, like, literally everything, and it doesn't actually, like, keep track of which ones you, like, know and don't know. It just has, like, short-term stuff, right? It doesn't do, like, scheduling over a long period of time, which is really important for Quizbowl. Like, if you're not, like, spreading out your studying, there's no way to cram for Quizbowl, dude. There's so much stuff you had to know. So, like, Quizlet, eh, it works for, like, the unit tests and biology cramming and that kind of stuff, but for Quizbowl, it just doesn't work at all. By the way, like, all this stuff is also really good for Science Bowl. Like, I think in my practices, I actually use Quizbowl questions more than Science Bowl questions to practice for Science Bowl because you learn a lot more in Quizbowl knowledge-wise, even though you might not get that much practice with sol problem solving. But, like, you can always get your knowledge and then also apply problem solving to Science Bowl questions later. I think, I, I really think that if you want to get knowledge, you probably want to do Quizbowl stuff with all these resources. Okay, Science Bowl rounds. Science Bowl rounds, yeah, I think they're eh because, like, they only test, like, one thing. They're really good if you want to practice your speed, right? Like, honestly, I think that Quizbowl kids could benefit from doing Science Bowl questions just to improve their speed. But I think Science Bowl kids could also improve by doing Quizbowl questions just to improve their knowledge, right? Like, I literally tried reading, like, Quizbowl questions to Science Bowl kids, and they could not get it in the first few lines ever, dude. Because a lot of Science Bowl kids end up, like, depending on their speed instead of, like, actually what they know. Another problem with Science Bowl rounds is that they're pretty limited, right? Like, the only ones are the ones released by NSB, right? There's no, like, major, like, other tournaments other than NSB and, like, the, the sample question that they release. Like, I'm pretty sure my Science Bowl team, like, between my freshman year and uh, senior year, we reuse, like, packets all the time. So, I really think quizable packets are the way to go if you want to study. Okay, so now the remaining stuff is basically just like a bunch of textbooks that I use. Um, I'll just like go through them real quick. So the first one is Campbell Bio, right? Um, that one is definitely like Epicness, right? That's where I've been all my bio. If you read Campbell Bio, you actually are, become like a really big asset to your Science Bowl team or to your Quiz Bowl team. Because Campbell just has so much information in it and like a lot of people don't like want to spend the time reading it, right? 
So if you spend the time reading Campbell, you learn a lot, and it also lets you like go to other places in bio, right? Like you can start reading anatomy, you can start reading plant bio, you can go on Wikipedia and actually understand the articles, right? So if there's one textbook you want to read for science, well, I definitely think Campbell is the best one to read first, right? The other ones are okay, but like Campbell is like the only one that really like adds up. Okay, next we got Zoom Doll. Zoom Doll is eh. Like I, I guess that's just because I already knew AB Chem. Like I, I mean, I took Chem pretty early, so. I didn't really need to read Zoomdoll again to learn more stuff. But if you guys don't have chem early on in your school and you want to get a head start, then Zoomdoll is pretty good. I'm actually, yeah, I'll put it at pretty good. It, it has a lot of good information. Yeah, actually, like, I think most of the science school stuff you gotta know is in Zoomdoll, so that is a good thing to read. Okay, Tratora. I think Tratora is like, eh, it's like really specific, and I think it's only good for doctors and people who are actually, like, care about, like, anatomy and terminology and that kind of thing. I learned a little bit that was useful for Quizzable, but not not too much, okay? I personally would read Tortora if you're doing Usabo or if you're like interested in anatomy like specifically. But if you're not if you're not interested in it, I don't think it provides that much value. Okay, Raven's Plant Bio. I probably thought it was S, but that's because I just didn't read it that well. <laughs> I got kind of bored with Plant Bio. I just hate <laughs> Plant Bio with a kind of a passion, not really. I just don't really care that much about Plant Bio, so I didn't really read it that well. It's definitely really useful for Usabo, but for Scienceable and Quizzable, I don't think like I don't think I've ever seen a question where I regret not reading Ravens really well to get it. Okay, Klein Ochem is actually like like pretty good. It's really it's like it's not epicness, but it's pretty good because I think if you read Klein, you start getting a lot of the quiz bowl like Ochem questions and science bowl Ochem questions. Like if you try to just learn Ochem by looking at Wikipedia, you're not gonna understand anything that it's saying. Like I try that and bruh, it does not work at all, bruh. So yeah, I recommend Klein if you guys want to get good at OCHEM. Okay, Oxford Solid State Physics. This one's like, eh. Like, it's pretty good. Like, I learned a lot about semiconductors and that kind of thing. And it shows up quite a bit in uh, Quiz Bowl. But I think I think it's like lower priority compared to other stuff. Only if you're interested in physics would I recommend doing Solid State Physics. Okay, Giancoli Physics. It's like, eh. I don't think it's really useful for Science Bowl or Quiz Bowl. Like, I mean, I guess if you want to... Okay, well, to be fair... I'm gonna put that pretty good actually, cause you kind of need the basics of physics to do like physics problems on um, science bowl. Like I think if you memorize all the formulas in Giancoli, you'll be in pretty good shape for quiz bowl. <laughs> not quiz bowl, science bowl. Quiz bowl you don't really need to do that much computation, so Giancoli is not that much useful for quiz bowl. Okay, then we got Carol's Astrophysics. Um, this one I'll actually show you because I think it's not that common of a book. <laughs> yeah, I already searched it up, but. Which one was it? Yeah, I did this one. So basically this one, I didn't really read that well. I was just trying to get vocab for Quiz Bowl and Science Bowl. And I memorized some of the formulas, which are kind of useful. You know, like the distance modulus thing, which is like useful for determining distance to a star using absolute and uh, parent magnitude. And it has some other pretty useful formulas. But overall, I think like half of it is way too advanced for high schoolers. And I don't think it's really applicable to Science Bowl that much. So I'm going to say it's eh, definitely not that good. Okay. Griffiths is definitely not worth it because it literally has college level <laughs> quantum physics and I did not understand half of it, dude. I did not know more than that, dude. I didn't understand any of it. Like, I think if I went through it slowly and actually did the math and stuff, the calc and everything, then I might have understood it better. But all that stuff is just useless for science bowl and quiz bowl. I don't think, like, if, if you want to learn quantum physics, for sure do it, but I don't think you should do it for science bowl or quiz bowl because you're not actually going to learn anything that's useful for that. Okay, and then the remaining ones are pretty good, I'm gonna say, cause like, I mean, this is just for the math and like, um, science, like math and CS questions in Quiz Bowl and Science Bowl, so I think it's pretty good, cause like, all the people who do math, like competitive math, are really good at Science Bowl math, right? Like, Science Bowl math is literally just countdown, and it's, and like, it, it really helps to have somebody who's good at competi competitive math on your team. Like, there's this one kid on our team that like, made Yusumo, like, in ninth grade or something, and he basically just carries it on math all the time, and it's really epic. I'm not complaining, okay? I will take it any day of the week. I think because of him, math is like the main question type that my team always gets. Okay, Berkeley classes, the reason I included it is because CS61, ABC, and 161, they all help me a ton answering Quizzle like, um, CS questions, but then again, Quizzle CS questions don't show up that much, so I'm gonna put it at eh. Like, it, <laughs> they, they help, but I don't think you would sh should take them just to do Quizzle. And finally, algorithms courses, which are basically the same as Berkeley classes, right? Same concept. They're good for CS uh, questions, but they just don't show up that much. So take them only if you're interested in other kind of stuff that's CS related. Okay, well that was kind of a lot of stuff, but hopefully seeing some of those resources kind of helps you out and gets you, gives you an idea of what to use when you're studying for Quiz Bowl. Like this is literally all I use to study for Quiz Bowl. Like I, I, I read through a bunch of textbooks. I use Protable a ton. I, I put a lot of stuff in my Anki deck. Um, I went through Wikipedia like every single day for 30 minutes just reading stuff that I found in Quiz Bowl packets. So, so if you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. But that is all we got for today. So as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys so much for watching again and see you guys next time.